Okay, okay. Yep, let's hop in. Game number one, day two of Hidden Cup 3. And here we are, everyone. Uh, we have this fancy Hidden Cup 3 overlay. Uh, shout out to the Capture Age team for, for working on this. It's, it's really nice. Uh, we even made some additions since the other, the other uh, day, which I guess was yesterday. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone. This is a best of five between Friar Tuck and Saladin. Uh, this is still the round of 16, and we have two new players. We do not know who we're watching. And the blue, we have Friar Tuck playing as the Mayans, and Saladin has gone for the Persians, and I have Nili with me. What are your thoughts on the Civ matchup? Ooh, interesting. Like, Persians is something we most of the time see on the mixed maps, right? Yep, yep. An option like Cross could be really good, or we have seen, yeah, some other maps like um, Square Pants, sure. where Persians are really good, but we don't really have those. So Persians now kind of rank up a bit more, <laughs> and I'm interested to see. Maybe it is a counter pick with the Persian bonus, plus two attack against the potential archers. From yeah, the and I believe... We talked about it. The Saladin player, first off, has chosen green. Hera plays green. Like A lot of the AM players like to choose green, so keep that in <laughs> mind. Uh, could be a complete mind game. But um, if you ban Cross, which I think Saladin globally banned, you don't have as many other hybrid maps to work with. So mm -hmm. Friar Tuck might be saving Persians for later, and then he might not really need it later, or it might not be the best civilization to have at that time. Yeah, I'm honestly a bit surprised to see Persians here. It might be a specific counter pick to the Mayans, but my A tier list, if we ban ad stacks, is probably Mayans and Chinese. Yeah, yeah, Chinese is one. Now, I, I have to, to double check, but I don't think El Dorado is one of the maps. I think Chinese, you would banned. save if El Dorado, yeah, it was banned, so you'd probably save it if El Dorado was available. Well, Persians can be strong here. Neely and I are just thinking long term, and Friar Tuck has gone for the immediate lame. He's going for the boar steel, but he's going the wrong way. And this could be the first time that someone has tried to lame and failed in Hidden Cup. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, the board didn't cooperate there, Neely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we had the other game where what I believe was MBL yeah. we tried to lame some as well yesterday and tried over and over again. And well, prior attack, if you don't succeed once, maybe a second time. Yeah, and he's not going to succeed succeed the second time either. The board did not cooperate at all. And and I what I was expecting there was for the board to actually cooperate and then for Saladin to try and block. Instead, uh, it looks like Friar Tuck is going to lose that eagle, and that is that is massive. You're not going to have the scouting intel. You don't know what Saladin will go for. You can't use your eagle to push in deer like some players do. That hurts. Okay, and yeah, if you go into the point of view of Mr. Tuck here, he only sees the berries, knows a bit about the second board timing, but that's all the intel he will get, and yeah, he doesn't want to play the guessing game. Yeah. He will take... Yeah, control in his own hands, and he will build a barracks before the mill. Interesting. So so I think a very common strategy for, and we have uh, an interesting stats here, uh, with including some players from Hidden Cup 3, but I think an interesting and common strategy for Mayans is probably to drush, get the militia out, full wall, and nowadays we're seeing a lot of uh, crossbows behind that. But you need a lot of time, and you need a really wallable map, and... He has scouted this map somewhat, but I don't think this is the best map to full wall. Yeah, it's not too pretty. He is going to go, and that, honestly, that looks very MBL style here. Like, three villagers walling a dark age? Four villagers walling a dark age! <laughs> I mean, it is it is MBL style to play very safe. It is also MBL style to go for the early lame. Now, it is uncommon that he fails with the boar steel. However, I think... While the recent patch has made laming more fair, it's still a bit different than what players were used to. Um, so there, there could be some of that in mind. Now, I think Saladin's base is way more open, Nilly. It's, it's probably a more difficult base to wall, but he's also going to be the more aggressive player in the Feudal Age. Yeah, and he's already up, obviously, with the Persian Pastor working to see. He flies to Feudal Age there, will go most likely for the scout defense. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't have the biggest problem, and if your opponent isn't really going for Feudal Age army, you can set yourself up and won't get punished too much, at least in the first 20 minutes for your bad map. Now, Saladin has not found Friar Tuck yet, so we talked about the importance of scouting, 
Unfortunately, he just hasn't found them, and he also hasn't seen the Drushes coming forward. And since the barracks was added before the mill, this Drush is a little bit earlier. Uh, the villagers are loomed, and wow, that was a quick reaction time from Saladin. Uh, though that villager is going the wrong way around. Uh, can he save himself? Tries to go for some quick world potential. No, yeah. just runs away. But the other two didn't react at all. This is, I mean, this is a huge Drush, right? It's not meant to kill anything. It's just meant to have some type of presence on the map and then full wall. And the walls were up. Oh no, there's a one tile gap. Okay, so the walls aren't up yet. I imagine they will be. And then he should be safe. I, I it's, it's really difficult to know what to do in Saladin's position because you want to go aggressive, but you might not be able to get through those walls. Yeah, and honestly, the scouting was pretty bad as well. He did spend a lot of time in the center of the map there. Yep. And now he could have gone in. And decided to go out, so maybe 14 HP wasn't enough, uh, or maybe he just saw, okay, you are fully walled, you're going fast castle anyways. Yeah, it, it it would hurt worse, I think, to get the scout trapped in there. Um, I guess the good thing about playing Mayans is that you kind of expect them to do the same thing, but the bad thing is that they're really damn good at it. Um, I wonder how many scouts he's going to make here, because he could go all in with scout production, like let's say make more than three, uh, obviously have enough to clear up the militia and then attack the walls and maybe tower. Or sometimes you see some players not create many scouts here and save food for their own castle age. Yeah. I think if you want to go that heavy scout into tower aggression, like we saw, for example, Doubt against Mr. Yo in the charity event two weeks ago. Yeah. Then you need to send the villagers ASAP, like pop 23 after you reach Kudos, you need to send them. Right away, This yeah. one is the approach. He only builds two scouts, we'll have three, we'll clear up the militia with these and try to get into Castle Age. Okay, so. good to know here. And I think Persian's probably one of the better sieves to weather this storm. Uh, you get a lot of early farms out with this scout build, and then the faster working TC is, it's like an extra villager in Dark Age, which is massive, and then that extends to faster... Feudal Age time, uh, uh, sorry, faster Castle Age times. Now, I want to explain a few things on the casting overlay for the audience at home, uh, because I, I got some feedback yesterday and apparently wasn't doing a good enough job, so I'm going to improve on that today. Mm -hmm. uh, the value at the bottom left is pretty simple. Uh, the, num the first number is the amount of resources it took to create the amount of military that's on the field, and the second number is the percentage of gold units. So, uh, you have militia here, they do cost some gold, but only 25% of that army. And then I also have a hotkey now, uh, and I can toggle through the food per minute, wood per minute, gold per minute, all of these stats on this page. And then this one here uh, is the value of units killed. And I will be toggling through those today, which I did not do in previous days. And then one more thing, I know Nilly has a lot to say, sorry. <laughs> um, one more thing is that the facts that pop up are not necessarily facts about players who are playing in this game. Uh, I thought that was self-explanatory, but some people felt like, oh, wow, uh, the four people who came up in this fun fact are, like, it, the two players that are in this game must be those. Uh, that's not the case, all right? It's just some fun facts and information as we try and guess. Oh, boy. All right, Nilly, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, those stats are so much more valuable than the stats we normally have, right? Because KD, what does 12 to 12 really tell you? If one guy lost 10 mangonels and the other guy lost 10 crossbows out of those, yeah. it doesn't really tell you the full story. So, yeah, absolutely lovely that we have those. And now you can see the scouts trying to clear up the militia. Militia hoping for their friend, the fuel age pointy boy, to arrive as well. Yeah, I, we'll I see the spear coming forward. I... Do you think Friar Tuck is going to be upset by how this game has gone so far? I don't think so. I mean, Saladin has... He was off berries temporarily. Saladin's also going into ranges, which is really peculiar with versions. Um, and the two villagers were pulled off gold temporarily, so that is a successful drush. And yeah, the pointy point's actually going to poke the deer. Like, All right, you're not <laughs> going to have that food. That's great. Yeah. And Friar Tuck even feels so safe. Only builds one Spearman and is now up to Castle Age, 25% on my time. And he's fully on stone. Seven on stone, that's more than you normally need. And he will be able to drop a castle, drop TCs. He will play it super defensively here. And Saladin, honestly, with double archer range, he needs to make something happen in Castle Age, big time. Okay, so on the, on the bright side for uh, Saladin, at least since Friar's going plumes, which is a huge surprise, and we'll talk about that in a second, but... At least since Plumed Archers is the choice, Friar Tuck cannot threaten Celadine until the castle's up, 
which means that Saladin's going to be in Castle Age unthreatened before the plumes arrive. The bad thing is, well, I don't know if this is good or bad. We're seeing a lot of players go crossbows nowadays, uh, mm -hmm. but the Friar Tuck is going plumes, and they're a bit more mobile and possibly a bit more dangerous long term. Uh, what does this tell you uh, as far as player guesses go? Because I know Hera. Hera's like, oh, plumes are trash. They're so bad because they're <laughs> a little bit more expensive. And I've been seeing other players go crossbows too. Uh, is there a particular player that might lame early and then might also go plumes? That's so tricky to say. It, it has to be someone with big balls for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I, I think the two that come to mind, cause I feel like Chinese players love plumes. Like, I feel like Vivi and Yo would go plumes. I feel like MBL would possibly go plumes. Uh, we have to see a lot of games today. I do feel like it very well could have been MBL yesterday. So who knows, man? Well, I really think we'll have to see what the decision making like is in, in the mid game. <clears throat> Yeah, for me it's more interesting who Saladin is at the moment because Skirm play here with some knights mixed in with the Persian player now drops some TCs. Yeah. He has to be very confident in his late play. That's true, and, and lots of walls, uh, playing extremely safe. Whoever it is, they, they do prioritize late game well, and it didn't seem like he really, he freaked out, it didn't seem like he felt like he had to go forward. He played cautiously. He's going to clean up this eagle now. Did he lose his Wallville? Oh, no, his Wallville's there. I mean, all things considered, I actually think Saladin's position is super strong right now. He's about to go to three town centers. And look at that amount of skirmishes against the Mazo guy. Do you remember, wasn't it Hidden Cup 1 finals where Viper played mass skirmishes against MBL's eagles? It was, I still remember that. I think it was a Gold Rush game. It was, it was an El Dorado game. And it was one of the most disgusting things as far as a caster goes, because I'm saying like, no, why are you doing this? We thought it was Viper. He's making skirmishers against eagles. This is so dumb. It can't be Viper. And then the e the, the skirmishers freaking killed them, man. Yeah, that yeah, was... I didn't understand that either. That was ridiculous. That was the first time I've ever seen anything like that. Uh, this is a bit different. I think uh, Friar Tuck was just making an eagle or two to clear up the skirms, but... Here come the plumes. Uh, these these are really hard to track, Nilly. And I think if this is someone like Mr. Yo, he's going to run in, he's going to get a villager or two, and he's going to run back. These plumed archer numbers are going to be kept alive. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think we will see a lot of fights, right? Both players so defensively, both players booming. And yeah, the eagle, not only to counter the skirms, but also to get some map control, right? Yeah. Because Fire Chuck lost his scouts or his eagles so early, he has had no idea about extra golds, relics, and he gets more intel now. Yeah, he also spotted the ranges a moment ago. However, it doesn't help him here, and he loses a plume. And this is as the lead skirm is going to be coming in. So yeah, Friar Tuck... Uh, plumed archers can be really good against Persian skirms uh, in numbers, but probably not in the castle. It's just going to be more about mobility. And I'm, as you said, being very attentive to his scouting. I saw he was scouting the right side throughout that fight, which I think is a huge play. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely love that. And obviously, auto scouting isn't a thing with the next eagle, so he what a has to do that manually. We'll get a lot of intel, and eagle gets away. Skirm is just trying to get to chase down and he invests into elite skirmisher and botkin wow Ooh, quite and, an investment and funny enough friar tuck just killed a monk <laughs> i knew that was gonna happen at some point uh he killed one of his own oh man he's on the dark side now but <laughs> i'm i am loving like, just that little move there from blue to distract the skirms with the eagle and the skirms went to the left the monk went to the right and snipe that was so cool uh nearly this hill in the center, how interesting is that going to be? There's this massive hill that spans over the whole center of the map. Yeah, yeah. and like Fry Attack, obviously being on stone, it's kind of reserved for him, right? He will be the guy who builds his second castle before Saladin can even build his first one. Yep. So I feel a lot of map control will be in favor of our blue player. I'm paying attention to Saladin's scouting now. It's pretty good. Uh, now he's already he already has one relic. He knows about the one on the right, and he's just protecting his monk. Uh, the plumed archers might try and swoop in there, though, because the plumes, they're aware that that relic is out there. Hmm. Very passive play, very boomy play. Uh, we're still not really sure who this favors, because I think Mayans are going to have a lot of momentum, but Persians, in theory, with the skirms and, and paladins could do really well. 
head. Yeah, Skirm's not the greatest unit with Persian. Sometimes you want to switch even into crossbows, although those aren't too great against plumes yep. then again. And yeah, we have already seen yesterday, even if you get two Persians with the full boom and your opponent is microing his ranged units to perfection, yep. it's not a guaranteed victory. Yeah, Katyan played incredibly well yesterday. That was, that was sick. Yeah, there's a Maganel here. Now, Maganel plumes? Very difficult for Saladin to fight at this point, and he has to be careful! Oh, and it's a huge shot to start off the day! That was not good, and I also noticed an attack ground from Firetuck, so it seems like he's a bit more of a micro-oriented player. That was a sick shot, and that's the danger now, and when it's 550 stone for Firetuck, the next castle could be coming in Saladin's face if he's not careful. Yeah, he might need to add some knights here. For now, he only continues with the skirm production, gets the defense upgrade here as well. Plumes are not really willing to take any fights. Mangonels need to be around for those. Yeah, and there's there's a monk there for the knights. And notice how there's not even Bodkin Arrow. Okay, now Bodkin Arrow is coming in for Fire Tuck, but he was more worried about his economy uh, to keep things close there. And now Bodkin's in, and, and the hill is there, and the, another Friar Tuck goes down. Uh, and another big Maganel shot! Saladin, he chose Skirms Nilly, he does not seem to know how to control them. Oh, man. But honestly, that's something that we didn't really talk about a lot, but the ping factor, right? Okay. That honestly doesn't look like two Asian players or two Europeans playing against each other. I think ah. that's worldwide, and we have like a 200 ping here. Yeah, yeah, so instead of a... A very low ping server, we have a server which is kind of in between, and the knight doesn't get the Maganel pick off, and the plumes and the Maganel seems to be working very well for Fire Tuck. He knows it too, he'll place a castle on the hill now. The skirmishers have been a nightmare decision for Saladin. Oh yeah, and well that's a big problem with persons, as we said, right? Normally people try to go for knights, but then it is impossible to play against maids, and that's why we questioned the person choice to yeah, begin with. It's true. Now, I'm, I am loving the other things that Saladin is doing, he has three relics to one. Uh, he has much better scouting, he has monks all over the place on the left side looking around. Actually, it's funny, there's a monk on the way back for Friar Tuck, that might be spotted. But uh, I think Mayans, considering that everything's so cheap for them, uh, being the plumed archers and you save so much food and the faster imp, it's really a good spot to be in right now. However, uh, Friar Tuck could have this castle temporarily denied. Ground attack there, skirms didn't move. Saladin, his skirm micro feels so weird. They, they kind of bug out. There's been a couple of times where he... Like, like he clicked the castle there too. He, he misclicked. I don't know. Maybe game one. I, I'm not. It's hard for me to get a feel for who this person is right now. <laughs> yeah, it, it is tricky. And oh boy, something really bad happening here for Saladin. He is going for the well prolonged castle age here. Did add some stables and Fair Tuck already on the way to him. Yeah. So Friar Tuck loses his mangoes there. Uh, he has another one on the right side. He's just gonna back up. Like I said, I, I think if this was if this was Viper Nilly playing as Mayans, he would have played this pretty much as Fire Tuck would have. Maybe he would have fought for the relics a bit more, but played extremely cautious, gone for multiple castles, and then went for Imp. And it's dangerous. Uh, Saladin is on the way to the Imperial Age himself now, but the lack of momentum with the composition is really dangerous, and and the lack of options to push up a hill right now. For, for me, Friar Tech can't be Viper. No, he no, I mean, in theory. The, yeah. the Eagle, and I think he's a guy that isn't really building the castle. But, yeah, surely interesting here. And Friar Tech, if he gets Chemistry and Bracer, there's not a lot that yeah someone can do in Castle Age to counter that. Oh, oh big raid at the right-hand side, Tristan. Yeah, I mean, the castle needs to go up for Saladin. He needs to protect his base. The Plumes could just run in as well. But uh, I think, again, Friar Tuck's going to play it safe. You know what I'm thinking for, for Saladin, and, and we'll speculate a little bit. Uh, I see the splits here. Uh, we mentioned uh, the possible ping factor with the server. A, a player I haven't talked a lot about so far in Hidden Cup 3 is Dogao. Um, <laughs> and I feel like Dogao loves his... Like, Dogao and Miguel, uh, they love their knight play. And Paladin is a great knight civ, so I was thinking maybe that's a possibility here going against the grain, but Saladin, 
Uh, the Vill Count's not bad, it's 107 to 93, but he's losing numbers, and he will have to deal with upgraded plumes in a moment. Also, which aids the Dogao idea, Dogao doesn't like Eldorado a lot, and Saladin did ban Eldorado, so that was actually my initial thought. Then. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's hard for Saladin to know who he's up against, right? Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, you're saying Dogao doesn't like Eldorado and he banned it. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Just a thought. Uh, plate barding on the way for Saladin. Now, the score's looking really good for him. He has three relics. It's three to two. And he is going elite skirms. And what's good about Persian skirms, I believe they get the last armor upgrade. So if you get full skirms with armor and you get a decent amount of cavalier, uh, that's tough for just plumes to fight. And it's also uh, kind of difficult to go held plume against that too with some range. The Persians are dangerous. I think Saladin just, he needs to hold on. And for Friar Tuck, he needs to push. Yeah, but most of the time, if you think about those scary Persians, you see them at like 140 villagers, six stables prepared, and that's not really the setup that Saladin has at the moment, right? Some archer ranges, a siege workshop, 27 militaries scattered around the map, some knights here, some skirmishes there. I don't see the massive push here from our Persian player coming soon. Well, I wonder if he's going to try and expand a bit. Uh, look at the amount of skirmishers he has! Holy cow! Did you expect there to be... 24 Persian skirmishers in the Imperial Age, <laughs> and they're about to have armor. I mean, nearly I'm looking, and there's tons of gold coming in for Saladin in the back of his base. This one gold is denied, but if Friar Tuck sees that amount of skirms, he's going to switch into eagles. And if Saladin is preparing the Cavalier switch anyways, there is some potential here. He has some insane eco right now. Absolutely. Trying to counter the counter of your opponent, and well, Eagle Switch is coming in, and as we all know, Magian Eagles pretty deadly if we get all upgrades there, 100 HP. Plume Dodge is going for another raid, but Skirms everywhere. Yeah, and you're fighting with trash units. He even gets a conversion there, so uh, I think as far as losing the Skirms go, he doesn't care too much. He's just been about getting the map, and he knew about this gold on the left side. And look what Saladin is doing, Nili. He's raiding the gold. He also knows about that neutral gold on the right. He's building a stable there. Yeah, I fully expect some raiding to come in on the left, and Friar Tuck just might not know where to go. He's even taking a poor fight on the front right now. Yeah, and g Tristan, you have the overlay now. Give me the percentage of gold investment here, because Saladin, he has to have really no low numbers there. He has, well, he has 28 on gold. He has 2,500 gold in the bank. He hasn't really been using gold. He didn't even get Cavalier yet. He only got armor, so... I, I mean the army value. Oh, the army value. Yeah, I mean 53% right now for Friar Tuck, and it's 24% for Saladin, and that's just a few nights, so... I'm just waiting for... This is a situation where the Cavalier need to come out. I'm waiting for that switch. 130 villagers now. Massive pop advantage. Uh-oh, but Skirm's in the center in danger now. Yeah, now when is the switch going to come in, right? It, it, it kind of had to expect this one. He's going for Hussar with 2,500 gold. Hussar? That is... That is a confusing play from Saladin. We see some house walls, uh, some gates, uh, quick fingers there. But you've got to hold from this, man. You had the right play. Okay, I guess Hussar and Cavalier are both on the way. Honestly, that reminds me a bit of Hera. Yeah, he had a picking game Hussar last first. Week yeah. Where he was sitting on like 10,000 food, 7,000 wood, 4,000 gold, while his opponent had no resources, pop on N60. And Hera didn't get the resource on the map because he played the person so, dare I say it, called frugal? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really going to be fun to see more games today and see who players might be. But for Saladin, whoever he is, I'm worried he might throw his position a little bit right now. He's raiding big time with the Skirms. I mean, they're going to go down, but I like the economic raid there. Uh, I also like the Ram train on the left. That's Ram... Ramdom. <laughs> uh, 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 I was an unintentional... Uh, I, what's What do you say? You misspeak, but unintentional misspeak? I, I don't know. English is hard, man. It's not my first language. Yeah, it's not my first language. But uh, <laughs> anyways, Cavalier spams here. We have skirms. We have some hand cannons. I think Saladin's eco is definitely paying off now. Still has a thousand gold in the bank. Yeah, and that was an interesting transition, right? Completely bank up gold and then go for the full amount of yeah. hand cannon he added as well. That's an addition that surprises me a bit. 
And what also surprises me a bit, the map control by either player on the right-hand side. Yeah, What's going on there? I, I said Saladin spotted the goal. He actually didn't. He didn't see that goal. And, and for Friar Tuck, it changed to his point of view for a moment. He also didn't see... Wait, hold on. That's... Is that the same... He also didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> it looks yeah. like the exact same scouting. I thought that I was on the same player's point of view. Uh, but I, I think the most impressive thing for Saladin right now is that he had the recognition that pushing up the hill is going to be really tough. So he prioritized the open space on the left. Uh, Friar yeah. Tuck's trying to lock this down. That castle might not even go up. Oh, but the quick gate, Nilly. That was a really clutch play. Uh, let's hope the gate stays up for him, though, because if it doesn't... Uh, Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I know what emotes are going to be spammed in the chat now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We had two Doubt Castles yesterday. One at 99%. This one's at 83%. Now, he might get out here to, to finish that at some point. But I think what this does, and you see it now, Friar Tuck, he, he brings pikes, he brings plumes, he brings everything so he can complete the castle. And then Saladin's going to notice that, and he might be able to push the hill. This is an incredible job. And and another sneak villager on the side. I'm getting max vibes with these single villagers in the corners, uh, Nilly. Mm. And I thought we might have seen max yesterday. Yeah, yeah, the sneakiness of the max is really canny, and I love that from him. I think in this late game with the map awareness, that could also be max. I remember a lot of games where he played the post game so, so well. Yeah. Probably not Persians his favorite choice, but incredible map awareness nonetheless. So out of uh, 6,000 matches, uh, Viper has the most Doubt Castles per match. 6.6 6 <laughs> 6 .6, 6 .6 Doubt Castles uh, per match in first place <laughs> in that category, or last depending on how you look at it. Uh, and then Doubt first, is actually first. fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> That's just hilarious. And Velez has zero. Velez, after 6,000 matches, has zero doubt castles in a. In a what? Yeah, zero doubt castles. He plays super safe, apparently. That's okay. funny. Well, That's the castle so did good. go up, so I guess it was a doubt castle for a time. And I'm still paying attention to how many resources Saladin's banking. And the one worrisome area was his four tile gold in the front. He has that. And now that he has this little side base on the right, I think Friar Tuck is going to be extremely distracted. Yeah, uh -oh. it's it's like so much going on in so many spots. Only now both players are actually going for their secondary goals. You can now see Saladin at the front and Friar Tuck at the kind of left-hand side of his base. The gold spot that he didn't see for quite some time. Yeah, there was a Hussar sitting there for a while too. We only have so much time to talk about things. And, oh, th this is the main army. I think Halbs and Elite Plumed Archers, that's what you'd want to go for if you're Fire Tuck. It's interesting how little Eagles mattered here. And, oh boy, Nilly, Siege Rams can be devastating to Mayans. Is this the push? Uh oh, and that's only two Harbadiers now going down there as well. He needs some Eagles in the center. No production of Eagles at the moment, only Harbadiers. And that is a big go for Saladin here. And we want to see Elite Plumed Archers, but actually it's only Castle Edge Plumed Archers for now. Yeah, Elite Plumed Archers coming in, but I don't know if this is going to be in time. You have the skirms behind. The Rams are soaking up so many plume, uh, plume arrows. And also, Green is raiding on the left side a little bit. He's making commander... Uh, he has commander on crossbows. He set them on stand ground on the gold. I mean, this is incredible multitasking from our green player. And that right castle's going well. down. Right inside raid as well. Oh. Just, yeah, castle's going down. No <laughs> upgrades on the castle in the center. And that's really costly for fire truck as well. Yeah. Oh, man. Another doubt castle in the same game, Friar Tuck. Don't you know the memes, man? <laughs> oh man, and you know what? Those castles were always late too. Green or, or Saladin was, or Saladin was quicker to the key areas on both sides. Uh, both players not scouting that gold is unfortunate, but I'm loving how Saladin is playing this and he's canceling out the expected Mayans pick so far. Oh yeah, in an incredible fashion, honestly. The push now through the center, very efficient as well. And yeah, Elite Plumed Archers, but they are not trading well at the moment. And yeah. if those numbers are dropping, oh god, Persians are looking pretty damn good. And especially if we are running completely out of gold, Persians so good with their trash. Yeah, exactly. Now, it, it is going to be a little bit tough to fully deny this castle on the right side. But I think I think what all that Saladin wanted to do was distract Fire Tuck. Uh, the plumes are insanely tanky. It is something else. And we have some halbs arriving. 
And what I'd like to see from Saladin is probably some rams on the flank too. Do you agree with that, Nilly? Like maybe instead of ram- Elite War Elephant! What? Elite what? War Elephant? What? No. He could throw with Elite War Elephant. That's so expensive. Didn't we see it the other day? Didn't Nikov or something do that? Holy moly, something we so rarely see. It is the strongest unit in the game for one population, and we are seeing it here. We are seeing everything in Hidden Cup. I'm... <laughs> I, I, like, biggest prize pool in nearly 20 years, and he goes, Elite War Elephant. Like, this is either going to be amazing or a huge throw, because that's so expensive. Most pro players... Look at him go! Look at him come on the left side! That's amazing! Uh, most players would save their resources and just go for Hussar, Crossbow, and Cavalier, but Nilly, Saladin is something else. Oh god, I have a new favorite player and Slam said he was rooting for Saladin and I can understand him. <laughs> oh man, maybe sneak peek through those games. Oh god, what a beautiful play by our play. And in, in Hidden Cup, how demoralizing is that? I feel like in the back of a lot of players' minds, they're thinking, well, I hope I don't face Viper round one. And I'm not saying this is Viper. Uh, well, what is Friar Tuck doing? Uh, he forgot to patrol, but I'm not saying this is Viper, but you might think it is if someone goes for this, because there's very few players who are going to have the balls to go for Elite War Elf. And this is, this is like saying resign, basically. <laughs> Please resign. And so costly in the center. Sending uh, at the left-hand side will take the gold and stone there. Sending all the villagers. This is looking so good for a Persian player who I thought was going for the wrong civilization, but he might have gone for the best civilization. This was, uh, Don't you know the meta, Nilly? I thought we were supposed to be pro casters. <laughs> it's obvious yeah. Elite War Elephant is yeah. the meta. Duh. Just hold 52 minutes to attack into Elite War Elephant and win the game then. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Oh <laughs> uh, man, the, the funny thing is, is there's going to be someone justifying their decision to go for Elite War Elephants, like some low-level player is going to do it now, except they're going to have yeah. 40 villagers. <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of 143 villagers with relics, they're going to have 40 villagers and think, why is that not working? Is this another Doubt Castle? What? Some villagers still working. No, it's not Doubt. Oh, that's not Doubt. Uh, we'll yeah, 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 not not Doubt. But I mean, there's I still a trap there. Started shooting. The oh. trap already started shooting at the site. Oh my god, Th this is too much for game one. I, I can't stand it, but but Saladin is, is bringing in some rams, he's bringing in some hussars. He's producing everything. Hussars, crossbows, elephants, cavalier, rams, skirmishers. You name it. Now takes into architecture as well, trying to keep his castle alive even longer. Yeah. The elephant, can he take down the trap? Yes, he can. Wow, the beefy boy, the tanky boy did it. Oh man, I, they don't look really happy about it. I noticed that. They look like sad elephants, but this is war, alright? This is a, a historical game. Alright, we don't do this in 2020. <laughs> uh, man, I just... Friar Tuck is not resigning. He doesn't want to tap out, but I think the time is coming. His monastery that has the relics inside, that's going to be battered down. But even with gold, you just can't fight this. Salin is going for gold everywhere now. He has the control at the left-hand side, did build the castle, or uh, the TC at the right-hand side. Friar Chuck is going for a very desperate counter Hold on, hold on. The most important thing is that Saladin put an elephant to protect the gold miners in the right corner. <laughs> like, he actually had that thing on patrol there to protect the villagers. That is hilarious. Oh my god. What a map awareness. Yeah, and all the plumes now. There's another elephant! There's elephants everywhere! It's like these things are Karambit warriors. There's so many of them. Yeah, it's just crazy, honestly, and Trial Attack has to GG. What a game, number one here, Tristan. Wow. Okay, so we were speculating the type of player that might go Persians game one. We talked about how it's expected to go Mayans, because Persians is a civilization that is better on other maps, but the person who went against the grain got the win, and they did so in astounding fashion. I think the best way to sum up how Saladin played this was... He, it was early imp that was interesting, Neely. He went Hussar, he went Skirm, he went for a lot of trash units, banked up the gold, and then immediately let the floodgates loose, and he destroyed Friar Tuck. It was crazy. Oh, incredible macro by Saladin. He did go for an unconventional civilization, yeah. and Doubt did say he has prepared some strategies, and we can expect a lot from him during Hidden Cup. If I look at the gameplay... It could be doubt with all the skirmishers, 
Incredible Boom waited and then started with elephants. But I don't think Doubt cares enough to actually pick a color. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. It's hilarious how we're summing up the guesses and the big butt is that Doubt wouldn't switch, change a color. Um, <laughs> okay, so I, I, I'm so torn because I felt like I saw Max yesterday. I also feel like Max would do this right here, but I'm also with you. Max would never change his color either uh, or he would choose teal. Oh, man, I think we need to see more games and then maybe we can I'm speculate. Ready. Yeah, uh, let's go to the achievements though. I want to see just how big that gold count was and that food count was. Unreal. 45,000 food for Saladin, uh, 40,000 wood, way more than Friar Tuck. And, and honestly, we talked about all the good things about Friar Tuck's position in Castle Age, didn't do enough with it. And I think it might have been from our experience casting this matchup before nearly where we felt like Persians would struggle, but it never really happens. Uh mm -hmm. 16,000 gold on top of having both the extra gold piles and the relics to bring in gold long term. Uh, pretty convincing victory. And now, uh, let, let's talk home maps, right? Saladin wins, so now Friar Tuck gets to go for two very closed maps that he picked. Uh, he picked Ravines and Hideout. That is my first thought as far as players go, especially after seeing game one, is maybe we're seeing someone like Bact from Vietnam at, in uh, Friar Tuck's position. Oh. But isn't he a guy who likes his men at arm towers a lot? I, a it's, it's true. It's thing? true. Like, I, I, he, there was another game. I'm going to be all over the place, but yesterday after casting every second, obviously, I felt like very strongly that one of the players was Bacter Vivi, but I'm not sure. And then I know that Bact... Okay, let me tell you this much. If it's backed or ACCM, they will 100% pick Khmer on ravines because ACCM. Uh, okay, so in the qualifiers, backed was down 3-1 in a best of seven against Lix, and ACCM told me that backed called him and asked for strategy input for the upcoming maps because he wanted <laughs> to make it into Hidden Cup three. ACCM okay. told him to pick Khmer on ravines. And I actually, I have to pat myself on the back here because I called it because I remember there was a rated game where ACCM and Bact played Ravines and, and ACCM went Khmer. Long story short, Khmer is beastly on this and let's get into game two. <laughs> that was, that was, uh, yeah, long story, but, uh, I think they would go Khmer here and it's Khmer. It's Khmer. Okay. So now Khmer is a good pick. The qualifiers were seen publicly. So, uh, all the other players could see it as a strategy. Uh, Saladin has gone for Chinese here. Now that's interesting. So it's why he maybe didn't use it in game one. And Friar Tuck is, is here in the blue and it's Khmer versus Chinese nearly. Yeah. And I think the qualifiers changed how the map is being played so, so much. At the start, we felt, okay, let's just go Mongols, full scouts. Okay, if Mongols is banned, we will go for hunts and full aggression. Yeah. And now with all the practice games and the qualifier in the books, People realized this is such a wallable map, and we actually did see a lot of like very passive civilization picks. Yep. And Khmer, they will just fly to Castle Age here. Yeah, and and Mongols, if that was even in consideration, was globally banned by Saladin. So, uh, I guess once he saw the maps, uh, we brought up Chinese being a, a common pick in game one. He felt like Chinese would be good here. I've only seen Chinese once on this map. And it was when I played Slam, and I lost, but it was still fun. <laughs> it was I, I made it to post him. I'll take it. Oh, yeah. what's this lumber camp? L look at this lumber camp from Fire Talk. You have outposts, and why? Is this vision, but was it the goose? Like, didn't the goose transmit ah. the info that there's not a lot of trees? I, 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 what? Of all the places. To build a freaking lumber camp, you pick the place that a low elo legend would pick, Friar Tuck. What is, he's gonna chop through that in a minute. That is surprising to say the least. And it's also kind of forward too. I feel like the backside is pretty easy choice. They saw the way better wood lines. Yeah, that, that is, let's call it questionable. Yeah. Well, the play for Khmer is probably two wall heavily and boom. 
And I think ravines makes the Khmer farm bonus even better because it's really awkward to place farms on this. So if you're farming with any other civilization, you have to place the mill, then there's elevation. Uh, using the berries for fire tuck, for example, he builds the mill, then there's some trees, then there's some stone. So it actually buffs Khmer a little bit to have them on this map. What are your All thoughts right, on we'll Chinese though? Sorry. Well, Chinese obviously pretty strong with their extra villagers at the start and well, you will have a lot of food under your TC, so mm -hmm. kind of a guaranteed smooth transition there and yeah, I think they will wall up and they have such a good early in play as well. Chukonus, castles up and if you want to go full map control, bomber towers, clearly an option because there are so many stone sp spots scattered around this map as well. Okay, so I'm using the uh, second tab here on my overlay. I don't feel like these statistics are accurate because there's no <laughs> way... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Look at the walls at the left-hand side. What? What's going on here? <laughs> Tristan. <laughs> you, what? You scared me. What? He has outposts. I'm angry. He has outposts, Nilly. What oh. is this? Oh. Wait, ah. he, he... All right, so I, I know what it is. I know what it is. Um, he, he needs to pace himself with the stone income. If he, ha if he has all the stone at once, then he's not going to have enough for later, especially now that everyone's in quarantine. So he needs to save this and then he'll just break down the walls later and take the stone. That's what it is. There's actually more stone back here. So it's, it's really good. He's role playing. Exactly. He's role playing. <laughs> I think he took Hidden Cup a bit too literally and was playing <laughs> blindfolded or something. Oh Look my at the god. Left That's so like weird. It. I mean, this is the second time now too. You just don't see this at the high level. Now, I, <laughs> I, I have definitely had games where I kind of forget where I am on the minimap. You just forget to look at it, and then you realize... Like, I think the biggest thing is, you know how you typically would build the barracks in the front of your base? Sometimes I build it on the side, and I'm like, oh, wait, I should have paid attention, but... <laughs> hidden Cup Round 1? And you... Uh, I guess, you know what, in his defense, he has to push deer heavily right now. So maybe that's it, but... Uh, he's gonna chop through his lumber camp, I'm surprised. <laughs> but anyways, oh. what I was gonna say before uh, all that happens... I don't think this tab is working for us, guys, so we'll try and get that fixed. It's not uh, it's not updating on the fly, and then this obviously doesn't really help us right now. I'll try and use that later on. But I'm, I'm curious to see what Chinese go for here. I know when Slam and I played, he chose Chinese, which I thought was a really interesting pick. I just said, don't go Mongols. And he went Fast Castle. Uh, Chinese have tons of options. I went Huns. But it ended up being Chukanu and Skirmishers and Rams against Hun Cav Archers, and I didn't stand a chance. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's tricky with the mobility and Skirms. It's tricky for you to de uh, decide the fight, right? And yeah. you probably got a lot more map control. Yep. Well, difference in strategies. I can tell you that much, because I don't think this is a fast castle. I mean, Saladin just pushed in his deer with his villager. Oh. That's a pretty much Viper move. To push in the deer with the so. villager? Yeah, I don't see that often. Hmm. That's something doubt wouldn't do. <laughs> um, wait. Well, no, actually, he died. He died. He, but he would accidentally shoot the, the deer on the way. See, <laughs> see, Nilly making fun of doubt it is better because Nilly's actually his teammate as well. So <laughs> it's not he's not just some pleb caster. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna do it anyways. Wait till you guys see the doubt showcase video. Uh, you'll understand why we trolled doubt a little bit. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You even messaged me. Nearly, I just cut out. It's so hilarious. Yeah, I was, I'm was. i so excited to show people. Look at look yeah. at all the extra walling out here. Even this wall initially didn't make much sense for Fire Tuck. And uh, he was gonna. He was actually going to wall like that, Nearly. That, was he really going to wall in a C-shape next to the edge of the map? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh okay. I thought that was open there. Oh, man, I thought that he was... <laughs> Oh god, I ha I almost had a heart attack there because he didn't have loom. He would have lost that fill and potentially one more. Jeez. Uh, well, at least he got him up. You know, he got the walls <laughs> up, and he's going fast castle. Uh, he, you can see the food. Khmer food income is just insane. And yeah. are we? W what's the play here for Saladin? He's adding a range. I saw him get bow saw and horse collar. 
But it's not as if he's farming extremely heavily behind this. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised as well. It's Maybe weird. some archer transition. How much? He has eight village, uh, 11 villagers on food at the moment. Not 11 enough. on wood as well. So second archer range coming up pretty soon. I think that will be some crosswoman aggression. Yeah, I'm just wondering. The, the difficult thing when pressuring Khmer is that they're going to be in Castle Age well ahead of you. And then they can just go for scorpion defense and boom. So uh, mm -hmm. since we were talking about doubt, uh, doubt recently was asked by uh, someone and his... Whoa, where's my mouse? Okay. If my mouse broke today, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> but um, someone asked him on his stream recently, what do you do against Khmer? Like, how do you pressure it? And Doubt said, you don't. You just go fast castle as well. Which, to me, is something that a lot of players would know. So I'm still surprised that we didn't see Saladin just go for a fast castle build, but he's saving up food. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's more on the safe side, right? He went fast castle with the barracks. Maybe wanted to go oh fast castle, fast feudal age. Yeah. And now gets the blacksmith as well. Probably we won't see fletching before he clicks up to castle age. Yeah. Pretty safe play, I think. Fire attack should have the ego advantage. Yeah, I wonder where the town centers will go for fire tuck. Uh, will he go for a town center in the corner of the map, which he is walled out, or will he go for a town center that makes sense? I think the clear TC area for me is probably right beyond these walls where the lumber camp is, because he needs a new lumber camp anyways. So I'm thinking delete the walls and place it right next to that wood line. That lumber camp still yep, yep. bothers me big time. He could have collected so much more wood. <laughs> uh, this is yeah. I, I have casted low elo legend games where the players had better lumber camps at 15 minutes. It's it's crazy. Yeah, maybe for hidden cup four we will only do 14 pro players and squeeze in two low legends. Yeah, don't even say that because people are going to be all over that. <laughs> don't Confirmed. don't even say that. People have already been asking. People wanted me to add an AI as one of them. <laughs> Like, oh. listen, listen, that would be well, great. Max, basically. Yeah, Max is the AI, but uh, that would be great. But there's there's 50,000, over $50,000 on the line here. And yeah, maybe we'll do a low elo legend hidden cup once players get really popular. We'll see. Uh, but there, I like I like the safe play from Fire Tuck here. Uh, and also, I think this comes back to his scouting. He scouted the archer ranges. So instead of going a full boom with two town centers, he's adding scorpions at the start. Really smart thinking. So Scorpions, Knights, and two town centers for Friar. As Aladdin's still pretty far away from the Castle Age. Yeah. And two Knights, actually a bit surprising to me. He sees the archers without fletching, so he knows opponent is up to Castle Age. Yeah. Won't move out for quite some time. And Siege Workshop, now Monastery as well. Wow. Not the greediest approach. Yeah, I mean, if you think your eco on one town center fast castle is better anyways... The safe approach might be to make sure you secure map, especially after how you saw Saladin play in game one, and he was incredibly good at uh, branching out. I, I like this move, and this is not something Saladin can really deal with right now. Now, he does have a lot of resources to work with when he gets to the next stage, but he better be decisive with whatever he des he goes for. <clears throat> Well, he can go for everything. And oh god, he forgot fletching. Wanted to click Botkin now and reaches few legend. Oh boy, uh, yeah. well, that's going to be ugly for him. But still, has so many resources. And behind this, even goes for monastery, so doesn't trust his archers enough. Yeah, so hoping to get a knight conversion. He actually just lost a scout, but the scout sniped a scorpion, which is pretty good value. Uh, I think with a, a conversion on a knight or two, then the scorpions won't be any threat here. So Friar Tuck will have to be careful. And Bodkin's now on the way, as is Heavy Plow. So uh, Eco's been prioritized. And this is, again, confident micro with range students from Saladin. We saw it in game one nearly where we felt like Persian skirmishers was a bit unorthodox. He didn't care. And he showed us wrong, eventually working towards something stronger. Yeah, yeah, that was really nice patience play by him for sure. Behind this, 30C now by our blue player as well. Not the prettiest one. He could have gone for so good ones in the left back there, but bought himself off. Now, some engagement here in the center. KD so far, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I, I think now that we see a third town center for for Saladin, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, if you look to the top, it's 46 villagers against 40, so it does hurt. 
But in terms of how the game plays out throughout, say, Castle Aged Imp, it's much easier for Saladin if he keeps these crossbows alive because he gets fully upgraded Arbalest. I highly doubt that we're going to see Heavy Scorpion be possible for Fire Tuck in early Imp. Cavalier, if you do that, can be tough against Arbalest and Monks and also very tough against the Camels that Chinese make. So a Fire Tuck needs to pressure. Yeah, he needs to have a very good eco behind this as well. Khmer can maybe give that to him. Saladin tried to put oh. his toe into the deep waters. Did get some hits, but now out microing the Scorpion quite beautifully. Not losing a single crossbow. Wow, and he immediately went for the repair villager. And he, all oh, the monk goes down as well. And he got the conversion. And this is just perfect, nearly. Uh, the Maganel probably won't go down to just the knight. But the crossbow micro is clean again. Whoever the Saladin player is, he is a confident player and he's playing very, very good. Holy moly! 7 to 2 KD, and that is one converted knight and your scout. So yeah. Saladin actually didn't lose any real value units here. That was incredible micro. The instant conversion, the knight split against Magnals and Scorpions. That was super high level. Yeah, Friar Tuck's got to be frustrated now, too, because he had the right idea. I like how he's getting. He didn't have Loom with the forward villager. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> at least he remembered, but I, I, I feel like. Sending the forward villager was the play, and he went to repair that one scorpion, but the crossbow sniped it before he could repair, and then the repair vill was prioritized immediately. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed so far with what we've seen from, from Saladin. I'm still not thinking it's necessarily Viper or Hera, uh, who are the two names that come to mind when you're thinking of the tip top. Uh, Katya and Khan still think we either saw Viper or Hera yesterday. I... Could be Leary, uh, played very clean, could still be Dogal, could still be Max. There's just so many high-level players that can play this good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the split micro there. And that's, like, what bothers me the most as a guesser here. I didn't see a lot of the Max games in the last one or two months, right? He played... He we played, have no idea yeah. what his micro is looking like at the moment. Yeah, so Max, I think I checked before Hidden Cup, and this is a fun fact about Wheelbarrow time as Wheelbarrow comes in. Uh, I... I think the last time he played a rated game was 11 days ago. Whereas if you look at some of the others, like Viper, like Hera, uh, they they play rated games periodically throughout the week. Max, they didn't care, man. <laughs> like, that's the terrifying thing about Max. You don't see anything from him. Two full weeks of preparation with Velez. Yeah, that's so sick. And Rubenstock helping out there. And they, in their finished chamber, Get oh, so crazy ideas. Oh, four uh, scorpions. Holy cow. Four scorpions is a lot of scorpions. But Fizaladin makes it out before it gets too bad. And ballistics and wheelbarrow. In terms of the most prepared players for Hidden Cup, I feel like the top four are the two Finns, Velez and Max, and then probably Tato Doubt, based on what I've heard. And uh, I guess what the Finns didn't hear. <laughs> uh, a nice Maganel micro. Again! Oh man, it's so good! Crossbows can't get anything done. Conversions behind this as well. Scorpion, nice way of fighting there. Yeah. <laughs> the no looker. Yeah, the, it's uh, a DE thing right there, but I'm just not seeing Friar Tuck have any success, nearly. He has eight more vills, but he cannot fight what his opponent has. Oh, that's ugly. Now goes for double siege workshop, triple stable. Ooh. That's a full castle edge play here. I, I like it. I just like for him to. Keep his scorpion numbers alive. He's lost half a dozen of them so far. And I also like to see him hide the fact he's getting upgrades on the knights. So do not use these four knights until you get chain barding. And the second you get armor, then flood the map. And I think the approach for Saladin is actually going to be almost the opposite. He's flooding the map with crossbows, but he's saving a lot of food. I believe he's going to drop a castle, stabilize, and then probably go towards the Imperial Age. But as I say that, a ram's coming forward. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Not sure if that was a misclick. Ram doesn't feel that natural in that spot. And now we get a good intel on who Saladin could be. Where will he place his castle? Will he go forward? Will he try to stabilize more map presence? Or will he play it super safe and defensive? Yeah, if it's Viper, it's a safe castle. If it's Viper, I think the castle goes up in front of the TC here, uh, pr protecting that gold, and then he goes to Imp. Okay, this is not the most aggressive castle ever. He's placing it right by his army. I believe he'll get this up, Millie. Yeah, there's no army movement at the moment from fire attack, so... Yeah, I think there's no real con 
Test. Oh here. man, the knight that he just converted goes in after the scorpions. You have scorpions attacking a ram. Uh, That's why I went for it. Yeah, the, the ram is perfect. If it was a Maganel coming out of the Siege Workshop, it wouldn't have made any sense. Unbelievable play for it's just super clean. And I, I just never have any doubt in my mind that Saladin's gonna close out games. That that happened in mid-Castle Age last time. And, and now again, uh, the confidence he goes into fights with is incredible. He's gotta be careful here though. These are plus two these are plus two knights. Uh, he needs to maybe back up a little bit next to the castle. What is he doing? That took way too long. The castle obviously helping out a lot. Those yeah. were just shooting some arrows here and Crossman will survive. But could have lost oh, five less. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, can he, he seems like a, a cool cat, a confident player. He, he just dives in and most oh, people would avoid castle this. Is ambitious. He sees it too. He doesn't care. He's just patrolling. He's like, whatever. I, I, don't, I don't care about your scorpions. Kamur have great scorpions, but I have great crossbows. It's very bold, though. <laughs> like, it's it's incredibly bold. I think this might be Leary. I feel like Leary, like, what did he say? He, he said, uh, my logic is quite simple. If you never lose fights, you never win, you never lose games. So, okay. that's what he's trying right now. Uh, but he's on his way to imp it. He's going to make a switch into Chukanu. Now, he lost way too many crossbows there. Yeah. Should have just let it go up. He's going to treb it down anyways, right? For blue now, the question is, what do you do? Because you've created so many knights, you've so many upgrades. What do you do with these knights now, if there's a castle right in front of your own? Yeah, you need to rush to him yourself, try to take the knights and go for some counterattacks. But at the moment, Saladin, he isn't giving too many open spots and he will soon drop a second castle. He yeah. doesn't care about those crossbows anymore. Only Chukunu is from here on. Yeah, and he's about to build another castle. I think he'll build it right next to this one. Boom. So he'll have two castles to produce Chukunu, two castles to produce, uh, produce excuse me, trebuchets, uh, and solid economy behind this. 104 villagers versus the 103 of Friar Tuck. Now, I think the one thing you can do with the knights is use mobility, and you see Friar Tuck trying that now on the right side. Oh, that's had an instant reaction, builds the houses there. Yeah, he just refuses to give Friar Tuck any real openings here. Yeah, so so think about this. Khmer is also a common pick on hideout, which is another pick for Friar Tuck as far as home maps go. So if Saladin wins this game, not only does he get another win, but if he goes Khmer on hideout, which has been really common, he could arguably even have a big advantage there. Uh, there are some other options, but just something to consider. The way Saladin's been picking his civilizations, it seems like it counters all the best civilizations and eliminates them from the pool for Fire Tuck as the series goes on. Yeah, he clearly put a lot of thought into what he wants to play on what map, and yeah, well prepared kind of puts him into... Yeah, the finished chambers, in yeah. my opinion, there as well. And now the trap tennis through the center should start, and it's not looking good for a blue player. Yeah, I'm still... I mentioned Leary a moment ago, but there hasn't been that much... Da like, it hasn't been the technical micro that you would see with Leary or Hera or Viper. If this player was blue, if Saladin wasn't picking green, I'm with you. I would say we might be looking at the Lord right here. Interesting <laughs> Civ picks... I know he put a lot of time and thought into uh, civilizations and preparation, according to my conversations with Tato anyways. Uh, oh, can Friar Tuck take out the Trebs though? The Chukunu went all the way back and they're now, oh wait, quick gates? What, what? Are you kidding me? Who is this person? Oh, oh, the gates, oh, oh, well, I mean, it was still impressive. <laughs> and the well, trebuchet did, like got, did more damage, nights, right? so yeah, yeah. Oh god. Yeah, in 2019 that trap would have survived. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Holy guacamole, that was quick. A doubt has chosen blue. I wow, can... hold on. We have some stats here. These are the co the colors chosen by doubt. In 266 matches from doubt. I don't see green on there at all. But that would be <laughs> the thing. Like, whoa, look at the stables from Saladin. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, is that... What is that for? Is he going for... 
camels kind of. Yeah, right? I assume There's it's so much be gold that camel. has to be camels. Yeah. 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 But blue does have town. I mean, he's trying to get town centers up on all these extra golds. The Chukunu are temporarily denying this one, but I'm looking now in the south. That's the thing about ravines. People think walls when they think ravines, but I think expansion. You, if you sit behind your walls and only sit behind your walls, you're going to be missing out on a lot of gold. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit like Land Madness Light when it comes to expanding all the gold and stone spots scattered yeah. around. You can fight for relics as well. And if you go for that one dimensional push that Saladin is going for, if Briar Tuck is somehow holding, yeah. it's not looking too good for Saladin. Yeah, and it's 150 pop for both. The Cavalier have full armor upgrades. And the Chukunu, they're not elite. They don't have rocketry. They're still going to be good and there's still Castle Fire here. But it's not a sure thing that Saladin's going to be able to win this Trep War. Yeah, and traps burning quite a bit, and now going down there, Chukunus are getting all their desired upgrades, a lot of Chukunus in the queue. Yeah, yeah, I guess you still have two castles if you lose one of them, uh, and I'm still concerned where the transition comes in for the Khmer player. Uh, you, you could go, go maybe Cavalier Skirm, but if it's Elite Chukunu and Heavy Camel, you just don't stand a chance with this one-sided composition. And Saladin's just holding on here. Chukunu's diving in deep. Can the trap be repaired? 15 HP. Chukunu's going down. Big loss here for Saladin. Lost a lot of Chukunu's. Lost his castle. And did not kill the trap. Nice win for our blue player. Yeah, and he says, oh, I lost the castle. Let's just build a new one here. A and Blue's, yeah. Blue's Cavalier. Okay, I think this is ACCM. Because the only player... <laughs> no, seriously. The only player I saw have freeze issues like that was ACCM and all the qualifiers. And I've watched this stream and I think it's a PC thing. And uh, that's my that's my guess right now. Because remember I said ACCM are backed with, yeah. with the Khmer pick. Only player, that yeah. one freeze right there. Obviously it's, it could be a DE issue as well, but there's something to think about. Saladin has heavy camels now. This is, this is really not looking good for Friar Tuck. Yeah, his castle is burning. Maybe to put on the fire, he needs to call the fire truck. <laughs> oh my god. You gotta be careful. You can't say fire truck on Age of Empires 2 DE, man. It'll get muted. Ah, you can't even say okay. bombard cannon and they'll mute you. Don't say uh, fire truck. I, I actually had to run Friar Tuck past Microsoft because I was scared it would just be canceled out by the new uh, system. It's a, it's a bummer. How many castles is Saladin going to lose and then rebuild? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's back to three castles after losing two, which is freaking hilarious. He seems really confident in this position. Yeah, and honestly, did he sell stone? Didn't he have like 1.5k stone just a second ago? Still... He's on... He has a lot of stone, and he, he's just built two new castles. So, I think it would, okay. I think it would make sense that he uh, didn't sell any. He really needs to finish off Friar Tuck's castle. I think if he finishes off Friar Tuck's castle then he wins the game pretty much this is an amazing position blue's not pushing anywhere else the camels are just here to take out the uh the cavalier uh -oh, military count really looking scary here for our Khmer player losing his traps at the front camels yeah somewhat down but yeah. traps are now falling and then it comes becomes really tricky for the cavaliers to take good fights this this is not the first time, though, that Saladin should be in a position to close out the game and then overextends. You know, like, right there, he fought before having the final armor upgrade in his camels, and he had the resources for it. I'm... Dave said doubt ACCM. Maybe that's what we're looking at, man. I, I gotta stop speculating. It's just too much fun to, to speculate. Uh, 148 villagers at pretty much the same for both, actually. Crazy economies. It's like ACCM? Leary is what I'm guessing. At you the still moment. think Leary, yeah. It could be. It would be like Leary to try and uh, try and force a few too many fights sometimes. I'm really interested yeah. if we're going to see Blue raid on the right side. I, I think if I were him, I would create some siege workshops and try and get some light cab or hussars into Saladin's base because this fight, it's just inevitably going to be Saladin's fight with the way this is looking. Would Leary pick Slopes as one of his old maps? Oh, it's so confusing, I have no clue. Tristan. I mean, there's a lot of players we have yet to see play any of the new maps. Viper, we mm -hmm. haven't seen play. He didn't play in a show match. Leary did not play in a show match. Uh, I, I could go down the list for you later on, but 
I, 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 I think that Saladin should be doing more here. He's had so many castles. He should have taken out this castle from Fire Tuck, and I just don't know how it hasn't happened yet. Oh, now a castle uh, more to the right side. That problem area for him. Beautiful light cap rates at the top. Nice quick bolts there at the castle. Saladin doing a lot of good moves here yeah. at the top. Raids at the bottom as well. Very active map presence at the moment. Yep, yep. Sending some light cap into raid. Uh, already taking care of this, as Nilly just said. And now we have two new trebs. And now is this the moment? It's been a few times now. I think he's lost about 10 trebuchets. Can he close out the game by protecting the trebuchets? I like how he's in three or four positions at once now. That's not something we could have said for Saladin a moment ago. And I'm not seeing Friar Tuck engage or do anything with the calf. <laughs> Just sitting here. He really seems to be struggling to keep up with the pace of this game. Oh man, how is Golden Cup looking for him at the moment? 20 villagers on gold. Not bad. But yeah, getting raided a lot. Raided in the back there as well. Cavaliers trying to defend against the Chukunus, but uphill. Camels mixed in as well. Not the prettiest engagements. Yeah, it, it's. Khmer needed to gain a big advantage with the boom. And because of Saladin's pressure and Castle Age, it, it didn't. The boom didn't extend too much. Now, he also did go for the siege and the monks as well, which might have delayed that. Uh, it's two relics for Saladin. He's, he's beginning to expand to other areas of the map. Uh, there's tons of gold and stone still available for both players, but hey, look, more raids coming in in the south now. I, I think Saladin is slowly starting to take control of this game. Well, more control of this game. Yeah, well, more control, surely. 190 pop to 150, yep. traps active in the center here. Now, basically killing all the barracks there as well. Wow. Meaning the camels become so much more efficient as well. Wow, and you know, you have the, uh, what is it, 20 idle villagers about to go down. You have the stone miners about to go down if you're Friar Tuck. Uh, he, he's still only going for Cavalier Halb, and the, the unit composition that counters that is on the field for Saladin. I think the GG will be coming in any time now, and Friar Tuck, after such a strong start to Game 1, and then what I would consider to be one of the best civilizations in Game 2, he hasn't been getting the wins because of how solid Saladin's playing. This is incredible. Yeah, Saladin never got raided all game long at home, really, right? And yeah, he takes Game number 2. Impressive play. Wow. So, speculation over the players can wait, but, but Saladin has gone for unconventional Civ picks in each game so far. He's a prepared player after Persians game one against Mayans, and now Chinese against Khmer. Nearly, you hit the nail on the head before we started casting today. You said that's the beauty of Hidden Cup. People can't see the strategies you've been going for, and you can surprise people, and I think Friar Tuck has been really surprised by these Civ picks. Yeah, and you can... Pre that That's the thing. If we have, like, so many different... Like teams preparing, let's say the Vietnamese, the Finns, yes. Dautato, the AM guys. It's like no mixture of the strategies, right? If you play 50 practice games against Vilis, you can be completely caught off guard if ACM comes up with another strategy. I know, it's so cool. It gets me so excited just talking about it. And and I think the reason that I'm heavily biased thinking that Friar Tuck might be a Vietnamese player is because of my conversation with them. Uh, but we'll save that for the polls later. We still have uh, more games. Friar Tuck, he's picking solid sieves. He is obviously a solid player to make it in Hidden Cup. Uh, we'll see what he does in his next home map, which could be a long game. Uh, here's the achievements. I, I'm actually rather surprised. So we're looking at similar gold counts, similar everything, except for stone and food. Well, and wood, actually. Well, anyways, in terms of gold count, the gold is similar. It's just that the Chinese composition was much better than Khmer. 91% of the map was explored. That is a high percentage there, Nilly. Especially considering that 5% of the map was walled in from Friar Tuck with the Palisade walls. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I feel like in terms of players, we're looking at a high level player who likes to take the map in Saladin. All right. So let's, let's speculate. This is fun. Um, hideout is the remaining home map for Friar Tuck. If he wins that, we then go to either Cup or Slopes for Saladin. Uh, I think if you're Saladin, you probably you would love to get a 3-0 here. It would be a big confidence boost. But what sieves are available that could be picked for the players on Hideout? Well, Britain's obviously is one of the main sieves. Yep. 
We still have Khmer as an option for Saladin as well. Saladin can also go for Mayan. So yeah. I think he has big stiff advantages here. Yeah, it, it comes back to game one and two. Winning against those civilizations, winning against Mayans, now winning against Khmer, it, it means that those options are available for you. And might be another trick to pull out of his sleeve here. Uh, let's hop in. Game number three. Oh, boy. Again, man, I'm getting huge ACCM vibes. Because in the qualifier, ACCM picked Cummins. We have Cummins. This is the first time we've seen Cummins in the main event of Hidden Cup. And Saladin has gone for the more traditional Britain's pick. Oh. A name we didn't drop at all yet. Yeah. What do you think about Tato as Saladin? So, I, it's so tough. I think, I don't think we're seeing Leary because I haven't seen enough nerdy micro. This would be a game to see how nerdy <laughs> someone is. <laughs> like, yeah. if you're going to show your nerdy micro abilities, you're going to do it with Britons. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be so many players. Max, Tato, Doubt. I'm thinking players that don't have a lot of flair, but that are extremely solid with both strategy and preparation. Which is why I say Tato, Doubt, or a Finnish player. So, uh, but let's talk about Cummins here, man. Cummins, when they came out, were absolutely broken for a month. I think they were likely the most broken Civ ever, if you think back. Uh, but others might disagree with me on that. I do. Uh, okay, you disagree with me on that, but uh, we could save that for another time. Oh, oh, hold on a second. Hold the phone. Scouts are fighting. Okay. Never mind. Uh, we can we can drop the phone now. Uh, Nilly, thoughts on Cummins? Yeah, uh, I think they're actually like D tier now. The, yeah, D -tier. you still have the option. Okay. Yeah, like even if you have a good boom, what units are you going for? It kind of has to be step lenses only. You don't have bracer. Kip checks are horribly bad. <sighs> kind of has to be a tower rush with ram aggression. Or I think you're just dying. So when it comes to player guessing, I think there are just there's a few pros out there who don't see the game like you and I might. I, I would never pick Cummins for this personally because of the risks involved. And again, the scouts really want to fight, but I think Friar Tuck's going to be fine because he has more HP. Um, Vivi is one that comes to mind. I know that he likes to pick Cummins. He actually picked Cummins nonstop for a month and a half when the save came out, and is uh. Still picking them nowadays as well and, and some more competitive events. ACCM, I saw do it in the qualifier. Yeah. There's only a few names I would ever think Cummins could work here, nearly, and I agree with you. It's it's a bit risky. You can add that second town center in Feudal Age. It's it's really good if you can push in deer, get a lot of food, and get fast feudal. But it can also be very dangerous against Britons if they get those eight range crossbows forward. Yeah, and like what unit are you going for then? Step lenses, not the best thing without any PS armor there against the crossbows and castle age. I think crossbows are just so good. Something we have to mention here, Saladin, he did scout his opponent before even finding sheep number seven and eight. So he really wanted to know about the distance yeah. and yeah, probably wants to decide on the strategy based on the map. That's something, I don't know if this is going to be featured in the showcase video or not, uh, but Tato... I remember having a conversation with him, and he said he always scouts his opponent before pushing deer. And that's exactly what Saladin has done here. So you mentioned Tato uh, at the start of the game. It's possible, man. It's smart thinking, too, because now you know the distance. You know that your opponent's not going to pressure you, and they're just going to boom. So you can decide, do I go Feudal Age Aggression because we're closer, or do I go for a Fast Castle as well because we're further apart? So he's probably thinking about that now as he pushes in his deer. And what do you think is best in this situation? I personally feel as though it's probably the only the only good decision is to go fast castle. I, I think if you go fast castle as Cummins, you just die. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, so... No, sorry for for Britons against the Cumin for... boom. Yeah, so ah, like Cummins okay. Cummins are obviously we're assuming we're going to see a two town center boom from Cummins. But what should the Briton player do? Is my question. I think just to guarantee yourself to get into safe castle age, I'd always play three men at arm aggression. Hmm. Just knock at the doors. Okay. And it's basically impossible to die in feudal age then, right? Yeah. You're putting okay. on some pressure. Most of the time you're slightly behind an eco then. 
but that's something I'm willing to take. Okay, so let me tell you, I have ACCM vibes. I'm going to tell you what he did. Um, he went fast feudal for a second TC, and feudal age is already on the way for fire tuck. And then he actually had two on stone, so he could build defensive towers. So man at arms came forward, he built a tower on one side. Archers came forward, he built a tower on the other. Now, I don't think Saladin is going to go for feudal age aggression. And that was ACCM's response to that at the time, so there's a lot of factors, but just things to, to think about. Uh, Friar Tuck is definitely going to go for a second town center. I just wonder where he's going to build it. Will it be on gold? Will it be on wood? Will it be on stone? Scary points here. Look at that 880 against 610. Saladin should know that Friar Tuck is playing something aggressively in Feudal Age. Yeah. It's kind of interesting that he still decided to not really scout, not really knows what's up at the front. Like, he, all his three gold spots are in one direction. I think if he was facing a trash, it could look pretty bad for an elderly player. Oh, that would be that would be so sick. Uh, Saladin has correctly assumed that this is going to be uh, the two town center boom, and there's the town center. And I don't even love that town what? center. Eh, eh, I hate it. What, what is, is that? that? It's, Two tiles away from the gold, away from the wood line as well. That's someone that can't make up their minds. You can't even put farms between the walls and the TC. Blech, ugly. But like, I'm baffled because I don't see any high level player making the mistakes that we've seen from Briar Tuck. <laughs> okay, he's gonna farm boom, right? But what what on earth, man? I, I am really surprised. Now, for those, there's a like 99% of people are probably confused as to why this is a bad TC. What's going to happen is when he creates new villagers from this town center, they're now going to have to walk just a little bit further to the gold. And then here, they're going to chop through a few trees and then be walking long distance to the wood. So the better play would be build it right up against the gold or right up against the wood. Uh, he has made this equally bad for the wood and the gold situation with this town center. Yeah, basically he needs to build the mining camp and the lumber camp here. Could have saved one with the TC spot. And also farming is bad. Look at his third farm. That's such a suboptimal farm already. Yeah, someone in the chat said, is Friar Tuck T90? And that, that hurts. <laughs> Look, he's going two to stone, man. I'm telling you. I, I, like, I'm getting all the vibes. <laughs> hey, he's going to send villagers to stone for tower defense. This is okay. actually, I think that this has been an easier call for me than any other person in the tournament so far. Uh, that I mean, it's either that or, you know, it's backed and he's using ACCM strats like I mentioned earlier. <laughs> well, it could make sense, right? Yeah. Also, the two guys probably preparing together. Yeah. Well, Castle Age on the way for Saladin. And the beauty of being Britons is you have cheap town centers in Castle Age. So, yes, there's a, there's a significant build difference growing there. Uh, Friar Tuck is going to gain the lead, but Saladin will at least be able to apply pressure in war, which is very important, and then add a second and third town center behind it eventually, so he's not that far behind in economy. Mm -hmm. And Saladin, as you can see, only six on gold, so he will stay on one archer range here as yeah. well. And as you said, indeed, second 30 C. So at the moment, Friar Tuck will obviously pull ahead, but once we get into the like 60 villager numbers, yep. I think Saladin should be able to catch up. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and even if you're behind an economy in Saladin's position, you will hold control. So it will take Friar Tuck some time to invest into enough military to deal with this because he's in feudal age right now. Uh, but I think the play, and, and you had asked questions about it. I know that you don't love the Kumans pick. I think the play here is probably to go Knights in Castle Age. It's just when that comes and what type of a position Saladin is in when the Knights come. Look look at the Lumberjacks. We're talking top 16 players in the world. And watch how far these villagers have to walk. Are we? <laughs> See, this is... Nah, that, this no, is I'm getting mean now. Yeah, I was, I was going to say this is tough talk from someone who lost round one in the qualifier. But <laughs> hey, 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 I'm a caster now. Yeah, you're a caster now. That's funny. But, uh, okay, crossbow is on the way. <laughs> and Saladin will just, he'll, he'll do his best to poke and prod. Oh, Sorry, Nilly. I don't even I like that to. tower too much. I think it could have been a bit closer to 
the stone there, blacksmith and market now coming up. We need another tower close to the bottom to see though, because at the moment, Woodline somewhat exposed. Yeah, the, the, the yeah. berries are exposed right now. I'm, yeah, I'm actually... Are you bothered by this? Like, Slam yesterday, I loved casting with him because he would sh he would get stressed for players. Right. There was one yeah. castle on a hill, and he, he was... He was so obviously stressed out because of the situation. I'm getting stressed right now because of Friar Tuck's decision to do this. It's so weird. Yeah. And Slam is also like a guy that can transmit so many emotions. Yeah. yeah. Just by like how, how he thinks about like uh, his his moans are so different. Like <laughs> uh, it's completely different with the annoyed. Uh. And let's let's avoid yeah, the moans just, because we're on we're on the front page uh, potentially okay, today. Sorry, we don't. Sorry, yeah, man. it's a PG stream, but uh, yeah, you're right. Slam definitely. I I don't need to hear about you and and getting emotions out of Slam. We can save that for another time, nearly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Well, Saladin will be loving his position right now. Uh, Thirty three villagers for him, and there is a big difference there. But he's on three town centers now, so he's three town centers against two. Now he might not quite have the farm numbers to produce out of all of them, but he's close. And another thing, late game on this map nearly is always relics, and I've been loving the scouting from Saladin. Uh, he's been scouting big time, and he knows where all of the relics are, actually. Yeah, that's so, so good. And I love that you changed the hidden cup hideout from the original one. That you gave them a third gold spot here. Yeah. So people aren't that reliant on the extra gold spots and try to make something happen out of the two. Yeah. But still, massive advantage if you get to four, maybe even five relics here. Being yeah. Started. And what Nilly's referring to is if you play ranked games on DE right now, the version of hideout is... Can we say it's bad? Microsoft's listening, but can we say that? I think we could say Let's it. Let's say hidden cup version is better. Yeah, that's true. That's the positive way to say it. It's, it's different. All right, it's different. Uh, there's only two golds, and there's no extra gold, so there's no use in fighting for some additional map control sometimes. And here there's a lot of areas to scout, a lot of areas to pressure. I would love to see Saladin use auto scout for his scout at the moment. That would be amazing. He scouted all the relics and the gold, so just, just auto scout it, man. <laughs> yeah, it is easy. And yeah, in the latter version, we also have extra golds but yeah they spawn pretty unfair this one feels more fair i've seen some weird generations and now we have our human player tacking into double stable yeah okay knights or step lancers uh, well the amount of villagers on gold has to be knights it, it has to be knights I, I don't i don't know where step lancers are supposed to be good now <laughs> uh at when they first came out they were op and then ever since they've been nerfed, I just don't see a spot where competitively it really makes sense to make Step Lancers. Uh, however, you know, the Knights are going to come out, and this is just for a little bit of map control. But 10 vil difference, uh, green, just needs to make sure, I think, mask the crossbows and, and get in as many relics as possible before the Knights flood. Yeah, and now he sees the Knights, he sees Bloodlines, plus one defense spotted as well. We yeah. lose some of his crossbow men, but the intel is so valuable here. Yeah, now, I remember I questioned ACCM doing this in the qualifier. Uh, it was it was round one, so his opponent wasn't quite as strong as Saladin is, that's for sure. And he got the win. So, there is something to this. We, we talked about Saladin picking civilizations where he was comfortable and had a game plan and getting wins. The same should be said for Friar Tuck. I mean, obviously, us, us as casters, we have our opinions, and we don't like how this game has started, but the reality is it's 72 population for Friar Tuck, and it is uh, only 66 population for Saladin, so there's some chances here for Friar. Yeah, sure, surely, and he didn't need to invest too much in tonight's, right? Didn't get the big pressure, mm -hmm. so the timing where I felt... Britons would be so strong, not really being abused by our Britons player. Yep. So, well, we will go into the relatively uncontested Oh! <gasps> what was that conversion time? So, so Saladin is trying to make his way out of here with the relic. Did he know there was a knight looping around? He's a ninja! Like right? He's a ninja! He got a conversion, and now Friar Tuck is looking for that monk. <laughs> But yeah, two knights. He should fight it. But nice yoink there for sure. And yeah. yeah, he must be really not only good in Age of Empires, but also in hide and seek. Yeah, he. The, what was funny about that is it's a little bit closer to his base now. 
So he has two relics. He even has a scout patrolling on this one here. Uh, now, I think he needs a little bit more than just one or two crossbows. I think he needs to make more. And wait a second. He's on stone, Nilly. Longbows? Are we going to see longbows? Looks like a distance isn't that long, right? And yeah. he wants to protect all his gold there at one side. So he can kind of give up control at the right-hand side area and only push one dimensionally. And drop. I'd love to see how this game continues. So it's a drop. People don't need to freak out. It's a drop. And we're just going to load into the restore. Um, let's restore the game now. The restore files always say it's Britons versus Britons, and that always gets me. <laughs> I was like, wait, he was Goomans, but uh, here we are. And I saw these monks. I was really interested how this would go. Oh! Well, the monk's going down regardless. Okay, well, at least Saladin converted the full HP one. Mm -hmm. But uh, the monk has gone down, and that's a relic that Fire Tuck should try and snag. But solid counterattack there at the main gold. Nice quick walls there with the villagers. And Monk gets another conversion. Good conversions here the whole game for Saladin. Now gets up his defensive castle at his main gold. I, uh, in terms of player guesses, I feel like if this was someone like the maps, they would probably prioritize a little bit more map control in Saladin's position. Uh, now we see the pikeman switch, so Saladin's gonna send the pikes forward, but Friar Tuck wants to build a castle on that hill. That's fascinating. Ooh. And now this comes down to who gets up to Imperial him a bit faster. Yeah. And actually, that's still lots of knights and mass amount of pikemen here, so both players feeling Okay, Castle Edge is actually the time where they attack a bit more than I actually thought. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought the same. I'm interested to see how quickly Saladin changes his mind, though. Because I, I th actually think Friar Tuck, with the amount of farms, and just seeing that castle there, yeah, you see it. He's saving up food for Imp. And Saladin does not see the castle yet. So instead, he's investing into... Wow, Bodkin Arrow? He just got armor on the infantry? He's going for full Castle Edge army. And if Trebs start coming out, this might not work too well for him. This is a very dangerous position for Saladin. Oh yeah, absolutely. Only now sees the castle, has enough stone for another one. It's getting raided, raided at the top. No reaction there. Knights will break in. And we have our human player up to Imperial Age. And obviously something that we don't see too often, but humans oh. actually have paladins. Oh, okay. So, uh, sorry, the quick walls fail there. Yeah, Nilly, I, I think the strategy from Friar Tuck is working really well now. As long as he does some damage here, he's, he's forcing some idle time, gets a few vills, and then somehow breaks out of here... He will have Trebs on the way. I was thinking more long term of, well, Britons with 100 army, with the longbows and with the halbs, probably better than Cumans. Uh, Britons can fare well against the Cuman boom strategy. But there's some real potential for Friar Tuck. And he's actually going to go for skirmishers next to the castle. Yeah, I think you have to go for that, right? You're facing so many harbors. The big problem without Bracer, yeah. not the prettiest thing. And I remember a Vivi against Terra game, like a month old or something, where we had Cumans not really finding the greatest answer to an opponent that simply went mass harbors. Yeah, was that was that Chinese versus Cumans? Was that the Regicide Fortress game? Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that's what made me think we might see Vivi picking this civilization as well. Uh, lacking Bracer hurts Cumans so much. It's pretty much pure paladin or nothing but i think having a few skirmishers with a lot of knights can be helpful the concern i have now is saladin is about to uh, sorry he's halfway to the imperial age himself and he's going to have two castles and he has longbows with upgrades and he is pikemen he has a whole lot more working for him right now what do you think about human full siege Something like Harbor DSO yourself. That's true. They actually get Siege Onager. There's so much we forget about Cumans. <laughs> uh, they get Paladin, Siege Onager, Step Lancer. Uh, I, I think, I think it's gonna be tough, Millie, because you can't engage with Siege underneath the castles. So, I'm a bit unsure. I feel like Fire Tuck's position is a bit fragile now. It's so easy for Saladin to make his army, and he has two castles. It seems like Friar Tuck, if he loses this hill, is going to lose so much map control after the fact. Yeah, and he only builds one trap. 
Humans don't get bombed by cannons, so that's going to be tricky. Skirm count, not that scary. Military count, 35 to 19 at the moment. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Saladin will not be surprised by this now. He knows about the castle. He, he also sees the archer ranges, so he knows that's coming. I don't think he'll be worried about Coom and Skirmishers. And also remember, it's three relics for Saladin. Uh, he is patrolling on the relic, too, so he wants to get the next one, and the monk's already on the way. Late game potential is so much stronger for Saladin, and there's just nothing here for Fire Tuck to stop even Pikeman taking out a trebuchet. Oh, that's and 200 and gold and 200 wood down the drain. And so much timing loss, and losing all the villagers there, he just lost all his forward villagers. That was such a big loss. Now no repair on the traps, no repairs on the castle. Yep. There's no chance to hold this hill. Yeah, the, the skirms are so weak. Longbows are so strong. Fire from such a distance. Uh, the Kumin Cavalier, they're quick. When you're upgrading skirmishers, though, when you have such a small army on this hill, it is not a good sign at all. Uh, there is, There are some Cavalier on the right. They actually did mop up the Monk. And I think Friar Tuck wants to switch position. There's some gold over there. I think that's probably the one thing you can do against Britons is hit from multiple angles. Yeah. Indeed. Siege rams from multiple angles is basically the biggest weakness. And at the moment, no attack into the heavy siege. But running around with Cavaliers and Skirmishers, he needs to break in though. So far, Saladin not taking the losses, but nice clear-ups against the trap. Yeah, I, you know what's awesome about Saladin's play is that he recognizes the threat and he's already prepping a castle on the right side, barracks on the right side, because all because he lost a monk. And he knows exactly where his weakness is and he's going to address that. All the while, he's addressed this and he's likely going to keep his castle up. It's going to be close. But yeah, he should keep it. this castle we up and continue to push. Uh, if we had those eight villagers, they could have repaired trap number one and two. Ooh. The castle still falls, though. Yeah, all right. I don't know how the villagers didn't die from the rubble. That's not very realistic. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they live to, to stone mine or gold mine. And I I fear for Friar Tuck, man. I, he seems like a player who had a game plan. But maybe it was a little bit too obvious. Uh, game one Mayans, you know what's going to happen. Game two Khmer, you know exactly what's going to happen. And then here with Kumans, I, I, you, you know you're gonna die. <laughs> like yeah. against the player like oh, Saladin. Speaking of dying, Longbow stabbing in deep into the Cavaliers there. Yeah, I, I see that. And maybe I'm being a bit too harsh as the Longbows go down. But I'm looking at the the total population for Saladin and the relic count, and and, and I'm honestly biased by how he's played this series. He seems like he has everything under control right now. I would be surprised if Saladin isn't going deep in this one. Yeah. Oh man, impressive play for sure. He's clearing up the full left side, still super safe in the right hand side, controls the relic, gets the extra gold. Such a safe play. And behind this, prior attack, not even getting the relics. Do do Kumans get Siege Ram? They do, right? I think they do. Okay. Yeah. So I think you would need. Paladin, Skirm, and Siege Ram to have a chance against this. That, I'm not saying that would even work. So just to give you guys an idea, he's a Cavalier only. He does not have any Rams. He doesn't even have Capped Ram. There's a lot that he would need to do. <laughs> oh, man. So much gold coming in for Saladin as well. Everywhere you look, he's on gold. He has 33 on gold as Britons. That means he will be able to research everything. Uh, Yeoman's on the way, so that's scary Britain range. We'll go up one more, and then Elite Longbow's not in yet, and such good value of this fight in Elite. The Cavalier are just getting destroyed yeah, everywhere you look. Up there. Yeah. And Skirm's only now getting chemistry and ballistics in as well. That shows you how poorly the fights were before. Yep. Castle is coming up. We are looking at Pop 1 and 46, but... There's simply so much green spreading around this map. Yeah, I think right now what Saladin's doing is he's being extra precautious. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see him stonewall the right side. He just wants to make sure that when he makes the final push, he doesn't get surprised by something. So he's snatching the fourth relic, and uh, he's slowly moving forward. Tristan, what? in the center, we had Cuban tower playing a tower there, placing a tower there, <laughs> but... 
Saladin with longbow 12 range is actually outranging the tower here. That's hilarious. I mean, it'll take a while, but he will eventually take that tower out. <laughs> That's one way to combat a tower. It's funny because he probably would have had to click that. Oh, no, now he's sending traps. Oh, you boring, you boring, boring player yeah. using siege against buildings. Boring. That's funny. Well, yeah, Saladin's getting everything. He's prepping the forward buildings, which is what you need when you want to finish off a game. Britons, it's actually quite a slow push, but it's also impossible to push Britons. Yeah, yeah, and more of the stay matey civilization, surely. Yep. But now going for some ramps, obviously lacking siege ramps, so the aggression. Well, missing some oomph, I would say, but army advantage way too big here, and well, simply doubling the military card. I, I just. I think if this was game number one, Friar Tuck realizes I'm dead and I'll resign. I believe this was a player who qualified, so it props to him. Obviously, had to work through the qualifier. It's not so easy to do. Still, you get a ton of money if money's a, a factor here, but these guys play for pride. And eight, uh, sorry, Friar Tuck does not want to see his name get 3 0'd. Uh, the big reveal. Uh, he does not want thousands of people to see that on Sunday. So he's going to try here. And I just... I have no faith in Cummins, and I have no faith in Fire Tuck being able to bring this back. I I'm getting absolute tattoo or Viper vibes now. Look at that. Towers. Guard towers with the deal men now. That's so sick. That's something we see so rarely. Tato loves his towers, right? Loves those towers. Look I'm, I'm the actually. Output. Wow. Seven plus eight. I think I think we might have found Tato. I, I didn't feel like we saw him yesterday. I thought like the question yesterday was, is it Velez and Max using the same strategy and being extra prepared, or is it Doubt Tato? And I I'm with you. I, I think we might be looking at at Tato right here. We'll let people vote here in a moment. But look how many towers. There's no way you push this. So many keeps around, mm -hmm. straps moving forward, longbows protecting this quite nicely. Full map control, pop on a 90 against 160, and it's only hustlers and skirmishes now. They can't break this. Yeah, his step husbandry, so his units produce a bit quicker, that's cool. Uh, but now the keeps are there, and they're going to keep Friar Tuck from pushing this back. Uh, also, full champion switch will come in, so we, saw, we see arson, we see longsword, we saw supplies. This is unkillable. Uh, Friar Tuck, he, he does he does actually have a raid, but Saladin, he, he re reacted immediately to the gold raid, and it's not a big deal because he's going to win anyways, but it shows you just how quick of a player he might be. Yeah, and those two, three harbadiers there, harbadiers might actually mop this up if the cavaliers are just following the, the villagers. Yeah. And he might actually survive with one, two villagers there, which would be Ready. more than I would have expected. Yeah, he's going to send more over there. There's no Friar Tuck can't even raid really at this point because he needs to deal with his dying base. And uh, if you <laughs> if you're building towers like this, it's because you know the game is over. I believe <laughs> it's like you could have well, built a castle, but you're gonna do you this build instead. You built more elephants in game number one, right? Towers isn't that special anymore. That's true. I keep forgetting about that, guys. That is the first time I have seen elite war elephants in a competitive event. I believe. 1v1 for sure. Have you ever seen, uh, I mean, in recent years, elite war elephants in a 1v1 in a competitive tournament? I can't think of any. No, no, no. 1v1, it's really rare. I, yeah. I, I've seen, okay, so I've seen war elephant because someone made, I think Nikov made it in the qualifier, but elite yeah. war elephant with full upgrades, which is what we saw in game one, that's just, that's the power move right there. And, and the sixth thing was also, it was like pop 180 against 170 at that point. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like, get out of my game, I'm just trolling. It was, I'm going to win the game with this. I'm this confident, yeah. Uh, unbelievable from Saladin. We start off day one with an insane result. Uh, Friar Tuck did not play bad, but did not play great. I feel like the strategy choices weren't good enough. Uh, and unfortunately for him, game three was a clear example of that. Uh, we talked about all the negatives of it. I guess since it's hideout and there's not a lot that goes on in the early game, we had a lot of time to also focus on his TC and tower placement. Um, so 
Hopefully it wasn't too negative there, but Saladin deserves to go through Nilly. Uh, this was Slam's pick yesterday. He said Saladin was not going to lose a game, and he actually got it right, not knowing who Saladin <laughs> is. So uh, Slam Stradamus there. Incredible. Uh, let's let's go to the achievements. I love how Slam went all in, too. I, I told all the co-casters to pick one. Uh, wow, more food, more wood, more gold collected, more stone collected. The KD was, was impressive, but... It was just all around good play throughout this best of five. Yeah, yeah, absolute impressive play. Stylish, super safe, very scouting based as well. Not the super usual choice, in my opinion, map number one, but two and three were so solid. We clearly looked at a top five player here. Okay, so this is what we will now do. Uh, we will bring up the polls in just a moment. Uh, poll guy, you can launch it if you want. Friar Tuck is who we will do first. Now, there's going to be some extreme bias here on my part. I actually, the greatest feedback I had on the polling system after day one is that people asked me not to say what I thought, <laughs> but I can't do that. So uh, we'll see if people agree with me. People make fun of me all the time. Who knows? But you can type a 1 through 16 in the Twitch chat now to vote. Um, if I were to be typing, I'd be going for uh, 9 or 11. And then, of course, we will do the big vote for Saladin. So far, people seem to think I know what I'm talking about. It makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. Every single player has received a vote. 11 votes for Viper. Wow. <laughs> that would be a shocker right there. Viper getting 3-0'd in round one. It's possible. Yeah, with those choices as well. <sighs> Feels unlikely. Yeah, just a bit. Just a bit unlikely. All right. Over 700 votes. Awesome, guys. And wow, this is... I, I think the conversations I had with ACCM and Bact definitely swayed things here. ACCM, 51%. Now, watch ACCM be Saladin. And watch Tato be Friar Tuck. And he's probably at <laughs> home like, he's like, screw you guys. You know, that's the downside of this if we get it horribly wrong. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. now we'll, we'll have the poll come up. And again, you can type the same numbers to vote for Saladin. Now, people, it's funny. People were just typing 11 as they were laughing. And then the poll came up. So we had a bunch of votes come in for backed. <laughs> 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 just because they were laughing with the 11 taunt. Uh, uh. I, I said it yesterday. I thought we spotted Velez and Max. They were well prepared. And they both went for the exact same strategy on Cup, which was very rare. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if that was Velez and Max, I think when we see Doubt and Tato today, if we didn't see them yesterday, we might see similar picks too. So, uh, it might even be easier to guess who Doubt and Tato might be after the end of today. Uh, but lots of votes for both of them right now. And yeah, Viper. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it, it, it felt like the heavy scouting approach... We didn't see something like super gimmicky. Yeah. Like such a solid, straightforward play. Like Tato is probably my pick number one here. Okay. So 39% believe it is Tato. And then, whoa, the exact same percent think it is Viper and Doubt. 131 votes for both. 14.5%. Uh, That's interesting. Well, we'll keep track of that one. And we're going to put that on a poster right there. <laughs> we'll put that on a poster. And we'll send that to Viper after the tournament. I'm sure Viper will feel really good about that. <laughs> well, well, guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Doubt will feel good about that as well. 